And I don't know that it's anywhere on here, but one of the things we hear from people looking to locate businesses, uh, industrial and or smaller businesses, is they look at what a community has invested in themselves. And I don't know if that's on any of the slides or not, but this is an investment that Canby is making in Canby. And it's, uh, it's, it's a thing that people look at, that people, uh, businesses relocating. They look at what is the city doing to make itself better? What are they doing to uh, improve their image? And we've got things like First Avenue, not so pretty right now, but it will be eventually. But people that are looking for places to relocate businesses, they look for things like that. So. Um, August 22nd, that was uh, today's editorial, actually yesterday. And as it turns out, the sluggish economy has brought about an exciting opportunity for the city to accomplish much more with the proposed $8.5 than simply build a new library. It will provide an opportunity for several other projects that will create a much more vibrant, more leverageable downtown than previously thought. Is that it? Yeah, go ahead. You want to do that one? Yeah. Um, this is a slide, again, from uh, the market tech <coughs> study of the retail uh, uh, market analysis of the, for the city of Canby that was done in June. Um, and um, what, it, what she recommends in her um, report is Rather than thinking about downtown overall, think of it as a series of clusters. Um, uh, number the first cluster in green is specialty retail along First Avenue. Um, retail and dining, I believe, is along Second Avenue. Um, the third one is civic office and institutional, and the fourth one is food and entertainment, and that's up by Cupsworths and um, the cinema. And um, you know, so this is just to point out that the the concept that um, is being presented tonight is in alignment with um, what Mary's recommending, I think, in her report uh, to the city. So all of the pieces are fitting together very well in that respect. So here's our budget summary. We've spoken about this as we went through this presentation. Uh, the library itself is seven million seven hundred fourteen, uh, like we talked about. Two million, as you see down there, by county grant fundraising for library, would be two million. The renovation of City Hall, as estimated by uh, Fletcher Farr Iote, is 573,750. The parking would be 257. The city admin building, which is the old library, is uh, 1,597,000. Total cost of 10,142,930 dollars. So the net cost in urban renewal agency funds would be that 8,142,930 dollars which obviously is below the 8.5 million that was originally allocated. So, I... Um, Could I just add something? Yeah, go ahead. I think the, I think the thing I'd add to the 8.1 million is there are a couple of costs that um, would, would come with this project that uh, we don't have a dollar figure for, such as the temporary cost of relocating city staff. So. Um, uh, it is, I think, clearly still going to be under eight and a half million, but um, um, maybe more than a little bit more than eight point one yeah. as this number. So, so the recommendation uh, from staff to the Urban Renewal Agency is uh, an increased scope of approved eight point five million library project to also include a new city administration building or renovated administration building, uh, renovation of the historic city hall and additional parking on the existing City Hall block. Um, I can go over, I have spoken um, to the county assessor this morning. I have spoken to um, the bond analyst, uh, our underwriter, uh, Wedbush Morgan today, and all very positive information. If you'd like to hear that now, I can do it, or if you'd wait until, like to wait until all the presentations are made. Because I think you're going to hear some stuff about what we're going to, what's going to happen with AV and real market value. So, whichever you want. Do you want to hear that now or later? Where's, where's it making most sense? If we hear it now, at least everybody will have the same information as we get okay. ready to discuss them. Okay. okay. You're on a roll. Go for okay. it. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I called Mr. Vroman uh, yesterday, and actually he got me back some information. 
And I'm just going to, I'm going to basically go down uh, quotes what he said to me, and then I'm going to show you what's happening in Canby right now, and then I'm going to show you the pro forma that Wedbush Morgan gave me uh, this week. Okay. Okay. So the quotes by Bob Froman. On January 1st of every year, they look at the statistics from the previous year, and that's what they use in terms of taxes, what's going to happen, what's your assessed value going to do, what does real market value and assessed value look, at, look like. So right now, they are looking at information that was in last calendar year, January 1st, 2011, December 31st, 2011. Um, overall, assessed value uh, will be up 1.5 to 2 percent this year. And I want to go back to um, the slide that Penny showed in terms of funding for the library from the, from the levy. And what she said was 1.5 percent. That's what Penny used, 1.5, over the next five years. Uh, he said the county is working on a five-year plan right now. They're not forecasting down assessed value growth in the next five years. They are looking at 1.5 to 2 percent next year, and I think he meant this year. But that would carry over to next year. It gets confusing because, remember, January 1st is when they look at the numbers. But in the 2016 to 2017 range, which is into that five-year period we're looking at, they're looking at being back in the 3 percent plus range. Uh, John Mitchell, U.S. bank economist. Everybody, anybody seen John Mitchell? Yeah. He's the funniest guy you've ever seen. Uh, anyway, uh, pretty well-respected economist in the area. He's predicting slow but gradual increase uh, in the economy and the housing market. These are quotes from Bob Vroman, county assessor, this morning. And one of the things we're seeing right now is, and it's been in the paper, the economy and housing market improvement has been improving so far in 2012. But, um, like I said, you can't say that we got a trend going in the first nine months. I mean, you know. But that's what we're seeing right now. He said, he said, this is Bob Roman's quote. He says, I see no dramatic downturn in assessed value. Having said that, there are obviously risk factors out there nationally and internationally. And you can go back a year, that's a true statement, you can go back two years, that's a true statement, you can go back ten years, that's a true statement, you can go back a hundred years. And I was telling somebody today, uh, uh, Paul Harvey put out an article one time, and uh, not him, he showed an article, and it was from a headline of a newspaper, and it says, World to go black. And the byline, or the, the uh, second part of that sentence was, whale blubber in short supply. <laughs> okay? So, bad news sells, and that's what you get. But that risk factors out there nationally, internationally, don't doubt that a bit. But there's also some positive stuff on the horizon. So, having said that about what Bob Broman, I want to tell you what the city of Canby has done. Um, and I'm going to give you the, the numbers in terms of what we've done with permits, what the value of permits have been in the city. And I'm going to start in 2006 and go through our current history is 2011. And we do this calendar year, not fiscal year. So in 2006, and I'll just do the millions and round off, up or down, it was $60 million of total value in permits. In 2007, that went down to 43 million. 2008, went down to 25 million. And in 2009, it went down to 8 million. In 2010, it went down to 3 million. 3 million. And last year, 2011, it was 24 million. So it went back to the level of 2008. And um, and most of that was in the commercial industrial. And in fact, most of these years, if you look at it, except for the 2006, that was mostly residential or the biggest portion. Now the biggest portion is commercial industrial. So what we're seeing is people not afraid to take a step in terms of investing in industrial property and in and, and job producing property. Shimadzu, uh, Pioneer Pump, 
We got Dragonberry starting soon. So uh, my point being, we went eight times last year, eight times greater than the year before. It's a, is it a trend? Well, there's a trend down now. It looks like we've got some back up, or it's coming back up. I'll, I want to hand this out. I'm going to give, give you. If anybody wants a copy of this later, I will certainly let's make sure I kept the copy. Yeah, better. Oh, there you go. I think there's plenty. So I talked to, like I said, Bob Roman. Then I called uh, Katie Schwab, and she had given me this pro forma yesterday. And I told her what Bob had told me. And she said that, well, first of all, in this analysis, you've got a flat line if you went in 2014 and your AV went flat. You know, what your coverage would be and whether you could make the payments on a bond uh, for the 12. In fact, it's a $12 million issue, by the way that I put in here, that is 3.5 million for the Sequoia to 13th and 8.5 for the library. So this is a $12 million issuance is what I'm looking at. And, and if I can clarify for those that may not have been following us lately, um, we've had some discussion of whether we should go uh, and continue or uh, move the extension of Sequoia Parkway uh, with the bridge across the, the railroad and finish it out to 13th Avenue so that we can take the truck pressure off of 13th Avenue and Milano Road areas. And we asked Greg to do the analysis, which he's presenting, can we do both the Library Civic Center and the uh, continuation of the industrial park? And the answer is yes. Yes. And so in September, it will be on our agenda to consider the Sequoia Parkway extension um, funding and approval. And if you took that, just, I'll just say, if you took the Sequoia Parkway extension out of here and did that a little bit further down the road, these numbers go really positive. I mean, yeah. they're positive now. But So uh, if you would turn to, uh, we did a 25 and a 20 year. And then let me say, again, we did flat AV in 2014. It goes flat. Or we did the use of Eco Northwest. I don't know if you remember the analysis done by Eco Northwest in 2011 so we could do the police station we'd have to do an analysis, or we did an analysis. And we would have to do the same thing, we'd have to do it again, by the way, for this bond issuance, because your bond rating agencies, Moody's, et cetera, require that. So we'd have to do that again. But using the numbers that Eco Northwest gave us, I hate to keep throwing stuff in, but those are even more conservative than... Um, Whitbush. No, um, I forgot his name. Anyway, he's one of the urban renewal gurus in the state. Anyway, I've forgotten his name. I'll think of it in a minute. But um, Tashman. E Tashman, thank you. Eco Northwest was even more conservative than Tashman. And so I'm using Eco Northwest's numbers. So um, if you look on page three, this is a 25-year uh, debt service. And it shows one of the things that bond rating agencies look at and are really concerned about it's coverage ratio. And if you look over about middle of the page, you see coverage ratios starting at the top number of 2.7, and it goes down at a slow point in 2014 to 1.39. Rating agencies like to see that right at 1.4 or higher. That is very positive. And that's based on Bob Vroman's comments today and the pro forma done by Wed Bush Morgan. And if the next page on page four is just a graphical representation of page three. But one of the, and then if you go to page five, that is the flat line. That flattens out at 2014, and you have steady AV. You don't have uh, an increase, you don't have a decrease. And Again, that's not what we're hearing from uh, Mr. Broman. And then again, on page six is just a, uh, a visual representation by graph of what is on page five. And then uh, page seven and eight, 
page eight is just the $12 million issuance. Uh, the previous numbers were a wraparound of all existing debt and what that would do. Page eight is just the library and Sequoia Parkway. Uh, page seven shows you what true interest cost is. And remember, it says 50 year low. We paid 4.91 for the police department. Uh, true interest cost, this is 4.05. So we're talking almost the nine points, uh, nine, 90 percent actually, no, 90 nine points, points. Uh, less, almost a full percentage point. So now let's go to the 20 year option. And that starts on page 10. And there is, on page 10, is all the debt with the 12 million we're talking about now wrapped in. So um, you can see again that that coverage is, it goes, uh, doesn't go below 1.4 on a 20 year. Your lowest is 1.43 on the 2014 uh, year. Again, on page uh, 11 is a graphic representation of what I just showed you. And then on page 12 is the flat line on a 20 year. And then if you would go to the back page, that is the one I really like. Um, it shows just the 20 year, uh, a 20 year issuance. And you'll notice that I said 12 million. There's the 12 million principal. The interest on that would be uh, at about 5.6 million. That's pretty good. So I wanted to show that to you um, so you'd have some idea of what the cost would be, the financing cost, and what uh, Clackamas County is saying is going to happen to the uh, assessed value. And that is, by the way, assessed value. Excess value is new building. So that doesn't address excess value um, because that's not in here. He's just saying, he being Mr. Broma, is just saying the 1.5 to 2% is what we're going to have with AV. But uh, you get excess value in there, he said, and that could go even higher. It depends on your building. And as you saw, we did $24 million last year, eight times the previous year. Uh, I realize that no one in the public has seen these, and we just saw them tonight, too, although I, I had a heads up of where I thought it was coming. But uh, if anybody would like to see this and uh, uh, dig into numbers, uh, contact Greg tomorrow, and he'll get you a copy of that. It's certainly available. Is that all, Greg? That's all. Thank presentation's you. complete. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yep, that's it. Okay. Um, presentation is complete. We're going to go into discussion among the council or commission before uh, we start uh, taking testimony. Uh, so if you wish to give testimony and you haven't turned in a yellow card, now's a ch chance to do that while we discuss things for a moment. Uh, turn in the cards over here to, um, to Sue and open for discussion among the council or the commission at this time. Uh, Commissioner, I've got, uh, I've got a list of questions that I'd like to go through um, on the presentation. Greg and Penny, thank you very much. It was answered a lot from the previous meeting as well and uh, answered some of them. Um, so of course I get new ones for you for tonight. Um, in Greg, in your initial um, statement in terms of talking about this project, it talks about um, you know a comprehensive uh, plan or a comprehensive uh, addressing of the city's needs for downtown facilities and so my question on that aspect is um, how does this plan encompass all of downtown and how are we looking at downtown as a, as a whole in terms of a comprehensive look? You mean uh, for just the public facilities? Well, or did ideally here we are, we're, you know, the, the idea being well, what, we're impacting, we're doing one building, but we are impacting the entire downtown with what we're wanting to do. How, where's the where's the bigger plan? Yeah. How is how does this play into that comprehensive plan? Um, in terms of what we showed tonight, um, what you was showed was a facility study and a need for. It didn't show necessarily where it needed to go or where it should go. Um, I think that staff has looked at that and said, you know, we currently own this much property. It's already in. Um, public use 
And basically what we're doing is just repurposing all of that public property that's already down here into other uses and more efficiencies. So it's really not changing anything in terms of public facilities, public buildings. Um, because this is all public property right now. The, the library is, the current library is public facility. It's just, it's going to be repurposed. It's not taking anybody away from this downtown area, which I think I heard loud and clear. And so it's keeping them here. It's just reusing or repurposing these properties. So nothing's changing in that respect. It's all the same um, because it's still public property. We're not taking any private property out that I'm aware of, and we're not taking, uh, putting any of the public property back into private use. It's staying the same. So in terms of uh, change, the only thing it does is shift the people around and I think make it much more efficient, as I said. So. Okay. Um, Penny, in, time, in terms of the, uh, what is the criterion for determining that the library is at capacity or exceeding capacity like what do you what do we how do we measure that well one way we measure it is by looking at what the plan was when this building was renovated um, uh, it was uh, designed for um, I believe there were something like 21,000 volumes that went into the library in 1989 the thought was uh, that by 2009 it would be filled to capacity but in fact by 2009 it was almost two times over capacity so um, it is uh, very much under the, um, the number that is recommended for um, um, a library serving a population of our size. And I can tell you that um, just on a day-to-day -day basis, and again, our volunteers who shelve can attest to this as well, our shelves are full. Um, we've we've uh, worked hard to per repurpose all the space that we can to maximize the efficiency. Um, originally, the, uh, the current library had a meeting room. Um, but about by about 10 years into its life, um, that was sacrificed uh, to, to, to house books. Um, so um, I think um, I would, uh, I guess I would point to both the standards of the um, Oregon Library Association as well as just our own experience managing the library. Objectively speaking, there isn't um, more room. Okay. Um, when we're talking about the for forecasting of the library, mm -hmm. how? Um, how do we forecast the draw of the new library? Like, do we know, is there a trend, like when a new library is built, how many more people is that going to pull in? How long is that sustained? I don't have an exact number, but um, I would be very surprised, and Troy could speak to this as well from his experience um, building new libraries. Um, it would be very, very unusual for a new library to be built that there is not a spike in attendance and circulation. Um, and. Um, you have experiences in independence as well. I don't have a statistic as to what that would be, but um, um, it's uh, traditionally uh, what we see is that a new facility or a renovated facility attracts people who, who um, the library just wasn't on their radar before. And uh, so there are many more card signups. They've seen that with the uh, new library in Happy Valley, um, a pretty significant increase in card signups. So, um, um, I think it's just a truism with a new library. Well, I, was, well, I was going to say, uh, I've seen that like, in Independence, built a new library, and what we heard and still are hearing, uh, or what they're still hearing is, um, we just hit a new record for circulation. And so it just keeps going up, and the, the people walking in the door was uh, new records also, <coughs> constantly. So, um, and you get those seven percent that are going to Wilsonville they come back here now you know things like that so just that's anecdotal I don't have any numbers okay um, one of the other uh, we talked about um, in Mary Bosch's report about the leakage mm -hmm. um, heading out of down or heading out of just Canby period mm -hmm. not just specifically downtown okay. um, can we measure how a library impacts that reversely I mean how do we bring money in from Wilsonville and Oregon City I mean how do we how do we Granted, I think of all the uh, public buildings that we could do, mm -hmm. um, a library is probably the best economic driver. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see a city hall necessarily doing that as much as a library or a police station. Mm -hmm. but is there a way to, how do, do we know? I mean, how do we? 
I don't. So, so you say so you want to commit leakage out of Wilsonville into ours? Huh? Well, well, if hey, if, I, I think the market tech study only I'm measured it one way. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. As I understand, I mean, the, you've all read the market tech study mm -hmm. as well, but um, it it, t it puts a value on the business of Canbyites who are going elsewhere instead of shopping or spending their money in Canby. But then it says, and then there's the value of the folks in surrounding areas that aren't coming here. And I don't think it establishes a value for that. So um, I, don't, I don't know the metric of the market tech for the, the leakage uh, in the one way. And since they didn't do it the other, I don't know if there's a metric for that. Um, but um, well, I suspect you know. we would probably see that with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. much like Wilsonville tracking mm -hmm. our 150 kids right. that are reading right. there versus here. Right. Certainly, um, if the library were, um, uh, you know, to 21st century standards, um, it would be um, um, more of a draw to the whole region than it is now. Okay. Um, the firm commented that the, all the current city departments will fit in, in their current size in the renovated library um, with, I think, up to a projected five-year growth mm -hmm. in the, the library building. Um, what about 10 years, 15 years are we, we thought about looked at how that's going to impact as city staff. Mm -hmm. Adelie Cambridge is going to grow. We're going to add positions. I mean, how far out to, until we're at capacity or beyond that there? Well, I, I think that's actually more of a question for Greg, and he'll probably be back in a minute. Um, <laughs> so maybe hold that question. OK. Um, plans for the courtroom? Have we had that conversation? Is that being attached here? Is that being moved over to? The library. I would save that one for Greg as okay. well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, then the, I think the other one might be, um, I've heard one of the big things with the police station was why did the urban renewal district go out and build a new police station after the voters voted it down? Is there, have we looked at why maybe not putting this out to the voters? Well, um, I think I covered that pretty extensively in my presentation of March 2011, uh, but um, I think there are multiple reasons why it is not advisable to go out for a bond. Um, number one, um, people are already being taxed for a library district. Um, uh, number two, uh, we, we serve within the city of Canby, but we also serve people in the surrounding areas. So our service population is 23,000. The city of Canby's population is 15,000. And um, we cannot overlay a um, service district. Uh, we can't create a library service district to create a bond for a new library because the library district already exists. So our option would be to tax the people within the city limits for something that serves a larger population. So um, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but um, it would end up being a pretty uh, substantial increase for what people are paying for library services um, uh, over what they are now. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think um, I, I think it would be a very difficult sell. And I think that um, just as the city, um, I think, never really considered going out for a bond for the police facility and instead uh, provided 100% urban renewal funding for the police facility, I think that um, um, uh, uh, similarly, when there's an opportunity to provide um, new facilities that meet the community's needs without raising taxes, um, that's preferable. Okay. Uh, Greg, I asked two questions that Penny deferred Sorry. to you while you were gone. Oh. Um, the first one was, um, we look at the city staff moving into the library, the soon-to-be old library, what, um, and that's a five-year projected that we'll be able to stay there. How, what happens 10 years, 20 years down the road? Yeah. When will we be at, it's hard to say when we'll be at capacity, but how much capacity can that hold um, with the added headcount that, I mean, undoubtedly we will add in the next 10 years, 15 years in yeah. the city's growth. Yeah, I don't doubt that there would be some additional growth. Uh, one of the things we can uh, look at is going up. Um, we have uh, talked to Troy about that. It's expensive to go up, um, so I mean we could look at um, going back to where we're at now, which I'd hate to do, and that is, you know, expanding out into other buildings. Uh, but I would hate to see that, so I think uh, it would be prefer preferable to maybe expand on the existing site, go up or whatever, um, and yeah, it probably will increase. But I see um, even with that. 
look at where we're at now, you know, dispersed all over town. And so Absolutely. I think coming together is, to me, a benefit, a bonus. So, but you're absolutely right. It would have to be looked at in the five to ten year. But we also look at general funds and um, not necessarily having the money to hire new people right True. now. <laughs> True. So uh, we have to get better with less. And efficiencies, like in to a new facility or a renovated facility, is one of the ways to do that. Okay. And my, I guess, last question for Steph, um, for me right now, is um, plan for the courtroom. Is that going to be part of council chambers? Uh, no. no. Um, what I'm um, planning on doing is I think court is more of a police function, and I want the two court people to um, be supervised by somebody within the police facility, and I think that's going to be Melody Thompson and uh, having court down there also. You have to have, right now, the, with the police facility, the, the old one that they just, they just moved out of, and court next to each other, that was efficient somewhat. <clears throat> but if, if they're down there, the police being down there and court up here, that's inefficient. We're going to have to, um, you've got tickets and they got information that needs to come back and forth immediately. And so we are looking at putting court in the new police facility. But if that didn't work for whatever reason, it could be. You got it right here. Right That's here. exactly right. Okay. And I think we could still house the two court clerks down in that area. I still think that's a function of the police. Uh, have, no matter where court's at, it could be up here. It would be inefficient, I think, but that could be done. Okay. Is that all your questions? That's all right. that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Walter. Excuse me, Brian. Um, yeah. I, I have the numbers for the, your previous question about a bond. I'd just like to bring those up. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, this was as of March of uh, 2011. Every one million dollars borrowed or bonded from city residents requires seven cents per thousand dollars assessed value. So to raise five million dollars, um, we'd have to ask, add 35 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value. And given that the um, existing library district rate is 39 cents for assessed value, that would be a pretty significant hit Increase. for the citizens to take. Perfect. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Any other comments from? No, no comments, time. questions? Not no, this time. time. Questions or comments? I'm good. Okay. We're going to move into the uh, public testimony yeah. section. Uh, and again, I'm going to uh, invite the speaker to the um, microphone, and I'm going to tell you who's next. <laughs> let's, let's leave it right like that, Troy, so people out there can hear, hear too. Uh, okay, so the first speaker this evening, uh, I've invited uh, Chief Ted Coons from the Fire District to make a presentation or his comments. Following the Chief will be Mary Walsh. And following Mary will be Kathy Shin. Good evening. Thank you. Can I get my comments up here? I went electronic. I'm not too sure whether it works, so we'll find out. Well, uh, you know, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Mr. Vice Chair. I'm uh, in commissioners for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Uh, for the record, my name is Ted Coons. I'm the fire chief and chief executive officer of the Canby Fire District. Um, and uh, my office is located at 221 South Pine, Canby, Oregon. Uh, really quick, before I go any farther with this tonight, I want to make it very, very clear. The fire district is not opposed to the library project. Uh, regardless of what's on the street, um, that, that's where we're at. And matter of fact, after my next comment, hopefully it's the last time you hear library out of my mouth tonight. So uh, I want to talk about TIF funding and talk about uh, local uh, government funding and, and, and some other things like that really quick. And TIF funding would be? Yeah, sorry, that's, uh, that's uh, tax increment tax financing. Tax financing. Thank you very much. I'm working on my next thought already. OK, well, anyway, so like I said, uh, we're not opposed to the library. Um, and I'd like to thank, uh, I mean, it's unfortunate that I didn't get to meet with uh, Commissioner Dale or, or Commissioner or Chair Ayers uh, before this meeting. But I spoke to the rest of the, ca the council commissioners uh, um, over this last week. Um, I want to apologize to a certain degree, and maybe I'm at fault. Uh, I like to think that, you know, maybe it's a shared responsibility. But I think we had a breakdown of communications as we move forward. I wasn't aware that this vote was going to happen or that this was coming to this position until about a week and a half ago when somebody dropped off an anonymous packet into my mailbox at the fire station. 
Um, and then with the article in the Canby Herald, um, it, it brought it all to light of what was going on and the urgency behind, behind this meeting or, or taking action. Uh, it's always my preference to not be a surprise. I don't want to come to these meetings and tell you things that we haven't discussed about prior. And hopefully my actions of meeting with Greg and, and trying to meet with all of you um, shows that where we're at, we're not interested in being disruptors. We want to be a partner in this community, and that's a priority for us. Um, real quick, I want to talk about a few things. Um, and you guys all know about it, but in order to frame what I want to talk about, uh, I want to mention really quick Measure 5, Measure 47, and Measure 50 for the people in the audience so they understand what I'm talking about. Measure 5 was a tax limitation that was passed in, in the early 1990s um, that uh, basically set a $15 cap for property taxes. We all pay a per thousand rate. $10 of that goes to general government, $5 of that goes to education. Now, general obligation bonds that somebody asked a question about a little while ago, when those are taxed, those are taxed outside of those rates. So it doesn't go against the government side, and it doesn't go against the educational side. So those are exempt from Measure 5. We still pay them, but they're there. Measure 50 that measure was a follow-up to Measure 47. Measure 47 was an initiative that was put on the ballot by a group. It passed, but it had some flaws and some concerns. So the legislature went to work with that group and worked out a compromise bill, which was Measure 50, that the voters approved. And what Measure 50 did is Measure 50 reduced back, back to your property tax values back to 1995. It was passed in 1997. And then it, it took all of our tax rates from all the public agencies and gave us what they call permanent tax rates. In the example of the fire district, we had a serial levy and a, and a, and a, and a regular levy. Uh, at the, I take it by a serial levy, and, and it wasn't called a local option levy. There was another new name to it. Anyway, when those were combined, that's how we ended up at $1.54 or $0.55 cents per thousand. And that's, that's permanent. We can't change that. The voters can't change it. We can't change it at the fire district. Nobody can change that. That's constitutionally set. But what we can do is we can come and ask you for local option levies. And right now, the voters in this district have seen fit and, and to, to allow the fire district to levy an additional rate of $0.34 cents per thousand. Um, so that brings our combined rate, and the actual number for those writing things down is 1.8856 per thousand, or basically $1.89 a thousand is what you pay for fire protection. Comparatively, the next closest agency to us in the county is Sandy Fire District at 217. And then from that on up, it jumps into the 230s and the 240s. So we're considerably cheap. Uh, I have to tell you, though, in full disclosure, the Mala Fire District is only $0.78 cents per thousand. They only have one person on duty, and even the people in the law, I tell you, that's not enough money to run the agency, and it's a string that's pulled very, very tight. So I know that they'd like to change that in the future. Anyway, so that brings me back to my comments. So understand that there's some permanent things in place that neither you, the voters, or I, as the public administrator, nor my board of directors, as elected officials, can change. So there's some concerns that we have in regards to TIF funds. There was a, a court case that was filed a few years ago and Mark Hemstreet, who was the owner of Shiloh Winds at the time, sued the Portland Development Commission. And in that, that ruling, what came out of it was, before then, TIF revenues, or tax and government financing revenues, the revenues that the urban renewal district gets, did not have to be reported within the general government section of the budget. Well, now they do. And in the handout I gave you guys up there, and I apologize, and I can hand some more out to the folks if they'd like to see them. Um, is a, a readout of the Canby Fire District and the city of Canby and everybody else, which talks about where we are. And, and in the pink highlight there, you see that the current, uh, currently the Canby Urban Renewal Agency has a rate of $1.6175, so basically just under $1.62 a thousand. Well, that number by itself, regardless of the action the Council the Commission takes tonight, that number is going to continue to grow as the value continues to grow. The hard part about it, it puts a squeeze on the rest of it. Um, like I said, you guys can vote us all the money in the world, but you're never going to get gold more than $10 for general government.